Dana, thank you. I want to thank CNN and Jake and Dana both for hosting this, everyone for coming out. And Bernie, thank you for joining us for a substantive debate on tax policy. Several months ago, you and I did Obamacare. Now we're back with taxes. And I got to say, this debate is, is very, very simple. Bernie and the Democrats want every one of you watching today to pay more taxes. And Republicans want to lower the taxes for each and every person watching this debate. Now tonight I'm going to make a prediction. Bernie's going to suggest in just a few seconds that this is not really about you. This is about, quote, taxing the rich. That's what the Democrats always say. But here's what you need to know. Every time Bernie says the rich, what he means is taxpayers. And so if you pay taxes, he's talking about you. Now, how do we know this? We know this because there's a difference between facts and rhetoric. Bernie's tax plan cost over $13 trillion. That's what he's proposed raising in new taxes. And who pays for it? Well, the Democrats always talk about the millionaires and billionaires. But here's a simple fact. We could take every single person making a million dollars a year or more and confiscate 100% of their income, everything they make, every penny, and it would raise about $1 trillion, about 8% of the cost of Bernie's tax plan. That means if you want tax revenue, you don't get it from the millionaires and billionaires. You get it from the middle class. You get it from the working men and women in this country. Tax cuts are about jobs and more money in your pocket, more money for the single mom to buy books for her kids, for the truck driver to be able to afford sending his daughter to college. For, for the family who's struggling to make ends meet to be able to save up and go to Disney World. This debate is very, very simple. Bernie and the Democrats want to raise your taxes, and the Republicans want to cut them so that you have more in your pocket. Senator Cruz, thank you. Senator Sanders. Let me make a prediction. <laughs> in two minutes, Senator Cruz is going to tell you that if we give tax breaks to the billionaires like George W. Bush did, like Ronald Reagan, that we're going to create zillions of jobs and you're all going to become very, very rich. That we have a trickle-down economic theory, theory, tax breaks for the wealthiest people, the largest corporations, and whoa, everything is good. That is a to totally fraudulent theory. Here is the reality of American society today. For 40 years, the middle class of this country, the great middle class, has been shrinking. And what we have seen is a massive transfer of wealth from working families to the top one-tenth of one percent, trillions in do of dollars, because of corporate greed and an unfair tax system. Now, the Trump Republican tax proposal that's before us today, this proposal is being pushed by Senator Cruz's campaign contributors, some of the wealthiest people in this country, by the Koch brothers who are worth $90 billion. Why are they pushing this agenda? Because 80% of the tax breaks in this proposal will go to the top 1%. In fact, 30% of the middle class will end up paying more in taxes. 40% of the tax benefits will go to the top one-tenth of 1%. This is massive tax breaks for the wealthy. And then the other thing they do in order to pay for their tax breaks, you know what they do? They cut Medicaid over a 10-year period by $1 trillion, throwing 15 million Americans off of the health insurance they have. They cut Medicare by $470 billion. So what this is, in fact, is a proposal, which is right on the floor of the Senate right now. Senator Cruz and I, going back tomorrow, we're going to continue the debate. It is a Robin Hood proposal in reverse. They're taking from the working families and the poor, and they're giving to the rich. It's a proposal that must be defeated. Thank you, Senator Sanders. Let's talk about some of the details now. Republicans are still working out a lot of the details of the tax plan, but the proposed framework would cut the corporate tax rate from 35% to 20% and reduce the number of individual tax brackets from seven brackets to three brackets, creating three new, bra new rates of 12%, 25% and 35%. I want to uh, begin with the question of who this plan will benefit. 
We're going to bring in Kelsey Yarzab. She's a student at the George Washington University here in Washington. She has a question for Senator Cruz. Kelsey. Senator Cruz, I come from a middle class family and I worked hard in high school to get into a competitive college. But even after academic scholarships, my parents and I are still struggling to afford my education and that's without indirect costs. Mm -hmm. So it's hard then for families like mine to see the benefits of cutting corporate tax rates and reattempting trickle-down economics when that hasn't been a long-term solution for the middle class in the past. How would you justify cutting the corporate tax rate by 15% but only barely making a dent in the tax rate for middle class Americans? Kelsey, thank you, thank you for your question and, and uh, congratulations on your studies. Look, I, I, understand the, I understand the frustration. And you know what, there are a lot, a lot of young people who feel frustrated. You've probably got student loans. I know when I was in college, I had about 100 grand in student loans and, and didn't, wasn't sure how to pay for them because my parents had declared bankruptcy when I was in high school. So I understand that's hard. You, you asked why cut the corporate taxes for a young person. I'll give you the single best reason, because when you graduate, you want a job. Do you know the United States has the highest corporate tax rate of any developed country in the world? You look at countries all over Europe, you look at Ireland, you look at the United Kingdom, you look at France, they're cutting their tax rates and what's happening is jobs are fleeing to those countries. Capital goes where it gets the right tax rate. And Bernie's solution is jack the taxes up even more. If you jack the taxes up even more, we've already got the highest corporate tax rates in the developed world. You'll see even more companies leaving, even more jobs leaving. And the frustration young people feel is you're coming out of school and you don't have opportunity. You know, Bernie talked a minute ago about the, the gap between rich and poor. He's right. It's growing. But it's grown dramatically under Barack Obama. Do you know that right now the top 1% have a higher share of our national income than any, any year since 1928? Uh, if you look at a, an, an article called The Greatest Wealth Transfer in History by Justin Gardner, New York Post editor called the period between 2008 and 2015 the great fleecing. Those are the Obama years because what happened? What happened is 4.5 trillion in wealth was accumulated in Wall Street and that was with high Obama taxes, high Obama regulation, all the cronyism and favoritism of Washington and the people that got hurt, the gap between rich and poor widened more under Obama than under any other president. What I want to see is young people coming out with opportunity, and the way you have opportunity is to have two, three, four, five job offers. When you cut taxes on small businesses and job creators, the result is everyone benefits because you have more opportunity, <coughs> better jobs, and higher wages. Senator Sanders? Well, for a start, uh, I commiserate <coughs> with you uh, as a student struggling. And what you should know is that in order to give incredible tax breaks, to the 1%, uh, the Republican budget that we're debating right now would slash Pell Grant funding. funding. Uh, Pell Grants are the major source of federal help for working class young people. It would slash that funding, if you could believe it, at a time when so many young people are struggling to figure out how they're going to go to college, these guys want to cut Pell Grants by a hundred billion dollars. They want to cut housing assistance all over this country. You're a young person. You're thinking of get, getting an apartment, getting a house. We have millions of people who are spending 40, 50 percent of their limited incomes on housing. They want to cut Section 8 housing and other housing programs by $37 billion. So what this entire proposal is about is to give tax breaks to people who don't need it and you do that by making massive cuts in education, in health care, in housing, in the programs that working families desperately need. Senator Cruz, do you want to respond? You know, I do. It's, it's interesting. In his opening, uh, Bernie invoked Robin Hood. And I got to say, I think Bernie fundamentally misunderstood that story. Robin Hood was robbing the tax collectors who were collecting too much taxes from the working men and women and taking it for the rich. In, in Bernie's analogy, it is the Democrats who are King John and the Sheriff of Nottingham. And Robin Hood is saying, tax collectors, stop hammering people who are struggling, who are laboring in the fields, who are working. Stop taking it to the castle 
to give out to your buddies. You notice Bernie's going to tell you all this free stuff he's going to give. And the Democrats love corporate welfare. They love to rail on the insurance companies. What they won't tell you is that under Obamacare, the profits for the insurance companies doubled. When you have Washington giving out goodies, the big guys do great. It's the little people who hurt. It's the young people. It's the entrepreneurs. Look, when my dad came to America from Cuba, he couldn't speak English. He was washing dishes. He was making 50 cents an hour. Our economy has been the place where people can come and do that. And it doesn't work. You notice, Bernie didn't disagree with what I said, that the gap between rich and poor has increased more under Obama than any president in history.